Good morning everyone and welcome to this uh, Sunday online service here at St Helens. We're going to be carrying on this morning in our new format and thinking about our new theme of coming home and particularly this week thinking about family. Uh, we're going to be looking at Ruth chapter 1 verses 6 to 22 today which Anne Brecken will be reading for us in a little while and then Karen will be sharing her reflections on the passage a little later as well. We'll hear from Sue and Stuart Golding as they lead us in our prayers of intercessions as well. So we've got lots to look forward to in our service today. But before we begin, let's spend a few moments in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for our families. We thank you so much too that we are part of your big family. We thank you, Lord, that you have so much to say to us through your word. And we pray, Lord, this morning that you help us to hear and understand all that, we, that all that you have to say to us and that you help us to praise and worship your name. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, and by the power of your Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's respond now uh, by listening to or singing along at home to the words of our first song, Come You Thankful People, Come. <laughs> Traveled here now many ways to praise the one true God And all of us have parts to play to praise the one true God So we sing, Father, Spirit, Son, You are God, one true God We praise You here as one, You are God, one true the one true God. We will make a joyful noise to praise the one true God. Come and sadness, come in pain to praise the one true God. Be yourself with us today to praise the one true God. So we sing, Father, Spirit, Son, come to praise the one true God. We join together old and young to praise the one true God. So bring your gifts and I'll bring mine to praise the one true God. Through our differences we'll shine to praise the one true God. So we sing, Father, Spirit, Son, you are God. One true The reading is taken from Ruth, chapter 1, verses 6 to 22. When she heard in Moab, the Lord had come to the aid of his people by, by providing food for them. Naomi and her daughter-in-laws prepared to return home from there. With her two daughters-in-law, she left the place where she had been living and set out on the road that would take them back to the land of Judah. Then Naomi said to her two daughters-in-law, Go back, each of you, to your mother's home. May the Lord show kindness to you, as you have shown to your dead and to me. May the Lord grant that each of you will find rest in the home of another husband. Then she kissed them, and they wept aloud, and said to her, We'll go back with you to your people. But Naomi said, Return home my daughters. 
Why would you come with me? Am I going to have any more sons who could become your husbands? Return home, my daughters. I am too old to have another husband. Even if I thought there was still hope for me, even if I had a husband tonight and then gave birth to sons, would you wait until they grew up? Would you remain unmarried for them? No, my daughters. It's more bitter for me than for you because of the Lord's hand has gone out against me. And this they wept again. Then Orpah kissed her mother-in-law goodbye, but Ruth clung to her. Look, said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go, and where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people, and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die, and there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if anything but death separates you and me. Then, when Naomi realised that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. So the two women went on until they came to Bethlehem. When they arrived in Bethlehem, the whole town was stirred because of them. And the woman exclaimed, Can this be Naomi? Don't call me Naomi, she told them. Call me Mara, because the Almighty has made my life very bitter. I went away full, but the Lord has brought me back empty. Why call me Naomi? The Lord has afflicted me. The Almighty has brought misfortune upon me. So Naomi returned from Moab, accompanied by Ruth the Moabitess, her daughter-in-law, arriving in Bethlehem as the barley harvest was beginning. Here endeth the reading. Thanks be to God. As I begin, let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for your word. Thank you that it's alive and active and speaks to us afresh across the generations. May we listen to it today with open hearts and open minds that we may hear the things you want to teach us. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. I love the story of Ruth. It's a feel good story, but then I know the ending. I find for this talk, I need to put myself in a place of not knowing the story or at least the ending. Would I have made the choice that Ruth did? This is a story about vulnerable refugees, Naomi, her husband and her two sons had been driven from their own country by famine and gone to net to Moab, a neighbouring country, where there was enough food to eat. There, Naomi's two sons married Moabite women, Orpah and Ruth. But then tragedy struck. First, Naomi's husband died and then, one after the other, her two sons. And this is where we start our reading today. Naomi, the widow, having to make that long journey back to Bethlehem in Judah, to her home where she had left some years before with such high hopes. Here in our reading, she seeks to persuade her two daughters-in-law to return and to stay with their own people in Moab to go back to their own families. Surely that's the sensible thing to do because she has nothing to offer them. And Orpah does just that. She goes back home, but Ruth refuses. She chooses a different path to stick with Naomi, to make her home and her future with her and with Naomi's faith. Your people shall be my people and your God, my God, she says in verse 16. If you were listening in last week, you will know that this sermon series 
we're looking at what it means to come home and where we find our security. I know that some of you in our congregations have changed countries and continents to arrive eventually in Stapleford or in some other part of Nottinghamshire. And some of you will be able to relate to Naomi much better than me. Having had to move out of your homeland to find a new home and not always by choice. I've recently enjoyed reading the book which St Luke's congregation wrote about their early life experiences. In my own family, my father knew what it was to be a refugee. He was brought up on the family farm in northern Poland and when the Second World War broke out, he was only 13 or 14 years old. He was taken to Germany to work in a munitions factory and he never saw either of his parents or his younger brother ever again. At some point he escaped and joined up with the Allied forces and while still a teenager fought in places all over Europe. When armistice was declared, he was in Belgium and it wasn't safe at that point to return home. And so he came to England to a barracks in Surrey from where he was demobbed a year later. It was only after my dad's death that I found his demob papers with a photograph. A very young looking 20 or 21 year old embarking on a new life in a country where he knew virtually no one, where he'd have to learn a new language and make a new life for himself. And for the next 10 years, he had no settled home, living as a lodger in different parts of the country, wherever he could find work and eventually taking an engineering apprenticeship. In his early thirties, he met my mum in Nottingham and they married and settled down. And it's perhaps not surprising that dad never wanted to move anywhere else ever again. He only moved house one more time throughout his life and that was when he retired. My heart goes out to my dad, the refugee, much of whose early life experiences I know next to nothing about. How about you? How about your family? When Fran, Jamie and I were putting together this sermon series, we originally called this week's talk from Ruth, Home is where family is. But actually, in this Bible story, Ruth chose the difficult path of not going back to her own family of leaving them behind in Moab and travelling with Naomi, her mother-in-law, to Bethlehem in Judah, to a country she didn't know, to a people who weren't her people. Like my dad, these two women, Naomi and Ruth, travelled alone along miles of dusty roads and were very vulnerable. In those days, the only outward security for a woman was to marry and be looked after, firstly by a husband and then by sons. And these two women had neither. All that they had had been taken away. So what is it that God wants to say to us from the story of Ruth? Firstly, something about the different choices we make in life. Orpah, the first daughter-in-law, accompanied Naomi so far, but then turned back to return to her family in Moab. The Bible doesn't say it was a wrong choice, only that Ruth chose a different path. Ruth, having left her own family some time before to join Naomi's family, didn't turn back now that the going had got tough. She continued on the path that she had started some years before when she'd married one of Naomi's sons. 
And now that things hadn't worked out as planned, she didn't flinch or turn back. Ruth shows loyalty and commitment, even stubbornness and grit. There was no guarantee that things would work out for her when they returned to Bethlehem. Although if you know the story, you'll know that there is a happy ending. It's an amazing fact that this story we have here of an obscure family in a little known part of the ancient world is recorded and passed down that we, that you and I, might hone our faith on it. As well as commitment to Naomi, Ruth showed obedience to the way she's being led. As she says, your people shall be my people and your God my God. She makes a brave decision and she's rewarded for it. She is one of only three women recorded in the genealogy of Jesus in Matthew chapter 1. She takes her part in the roll call in the history of God's people and in his plans and purposes for them. For Ruth, home was to be with her new family, even though that looked so unpromising. It meant embracing uncertainty and to begin with poverty and hard work. No one else can tell us how to act in this life, what path to follow or what decisions to take. But in the Gospels we're told that we are and will be accountable to God for our decisions. Indeed, which one of us would be able to stand before him, blameless, except through the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and his sacrifice for us. So in conclusion, I want to give thanks today for our Christian heritage. We come in a long line of people who, like Ruth, were doing their best to follow God and to do the right thing. Let's not give up in our own walk with God, especially when life takes a difficult turn or things are harder than we thought. And can I ask, what is your equivalent of Moab? The thing that you have to leave behind or let go of in order to serve God more fully in the future and to be the person that he's calling you to be. And how are we living out our faith in order to include the stranger in our midst? The Lord calls us to find our security, our identity and our true home in him to be courageous and to live in the light of all his promises to us. Let's pray that we'll be able to do that. In his name, Amen. Shall we pray together? Lord, we are reminded that although we continue to feel apart as a church family, we can still come together on Zoom and in church to praise and pray to you and we thank you. We bring our precious world to you, aware of the turmoil, unrest and disease raging in so many countries. In particular, we pray for India fighting the ter terrible disease and Myanmar fighting a brutal regime and poverty, hunger and war affecting so many other countries. Lord, we pray for your faithful people, our friends, working for you in faraway countries, the Shin family in South Korea at the moment, Doris and Alejandro in Peru, and Dorcas in Uganda. Pour out your blessings on their actions and efforts as they continue to work for you. Lord, as we think of Ruth's story today, we thank you for her loving obedience and faithfulness towards Naomi making the decision to stay with her 
as she, Naomi, decides to return home. We thank you for our own homes, Lord, places of safety, security and comfort, but remembering that some do not have homes to go to. We see them daily on our streets and shop doorways, and our hearts go out to them. We pray for the many organisations, charities and individuals who care deeply and work unfailingly for people in need. We now think ahead to our AGM to be held in a little while. Be with us, Lord, as we finalise details for the year, year ahead. Help us to remember that the church is nothing unless it is part of the community. And we ask you to encourage us all to continue to build a caring Christian community in this town of Stapleford. Amen. To close, I will read one of my collected cuttings. On Friday, 3rd of November 2017, in a letter to the Daily Telegraph, John Stuart Smith wrote, Sir, in a recent thought for the day on Radio 4, the Reverend Sam Wells said, Christianity is founded on a man who didn't live very long, didn't kill anybody, didn't invent anything, didn't publish a book or record any music, didn't settle scores or lead nations, didn't break records or win prizes, didn't have many friends left when he died, or any followers on social media. But for me and millions of others, he made a difference. He made a difference by losing his life, not gaining it. He made a difference by recognising there was something bigger than him, which put his personal security in the shade. He made a difference through forgiving others and pointing the way to everlasting life. In life, we are all faced with chances and choices where we can make a difference. We want to hear more about this short life that did. Amen. Amen. Well, we've come now to the time in our service where we have our notices. Uh, today is, of course, our AGM meeting. Uh, it's on Zoom at 11.30, so if you'd like to join in with that, it'd be really wonderful to have a large crowd of people joining in. Uh, Thursday the 20th of May is our 24-hour of prayer day, and you can sign up for that. And also next week, of course, we're going to be celebrating Pentecost. And in our in-person morning service at St Helens, we're hoping to have space uh, for some Pentecostal praise. So if you'd like to join in with that, please do remember to book in at the office.
finish now in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for our families and friends. We thank you that because of Jesus Christ, we are part of your great big family, God. We thank you, Lord, for everything that we've heard today. And we pray by your Holy Spirit that you help us apply what we've heard to our lives and help us to continually worship your name. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Go in peace to serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen.